Amen. Friends, will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, spirit of life, source of all. We know you by many names and no name. We know you in the water and we know you in thirst. When we float easily in the stream of life and when the waves tumble us, we feel your loving and guiding presence through it all. Comfort us this day through the actions of our family and our friends and our communities, through some small bits of good news, through joy where we can find it, through rest and through the peace that passes understanding. Bring us solace when there is heartbreak. Bring us steadiness when there is uncertainty. Courage when there is terror. And tears when there are things to weep about. We ask these things for ourselves and for those we love and for those we do not love. Amen. Step by step, the longest march can be won, can be won. Many stones can form an arch, singly none, singly none. And by union, what we will can be accomplished still. Drops of water turn a mill, singly none, singly Thank you, Wendell and Phoenix, for that beautiful version of our hymn, Step by Step, an old Union song. There are no monsters. My colleague, the Reverend Molly House Gordon, reminded us last week. There are no monsters fighting black liberation activist and thinker Adrian Marie Brown. No monsters though we live in a monstrous time. No monsters though liberal media treats the president like a boogeyman and the whole country like a child underneath whose bed he hides. No monsters though we see monstrous actions around us. Yet another police shooting this week, though Jacob Blake lives yet. Another instance of police openly cooperating with white supremacist groups. Videos of officers saying, we are glad you guys are here. More videos of that 17 year old white kid whose mother drove him across state lines where he killed two protesters and walked unscathed through a line of cop cars innocent blood on his hands. The 
there are no monsters. Only people. Only the tragic, beautiful, complicated, fearful mess of humanity. There is monstrosity. But much like scapegoating the urge to make one another into monsters as if that will somehow isolate the problem lets all the rest of us and the structures in which we live off the hook for the monstrosity around us. In the face of such blatant violence, which makes the news largely because of the uprisings and its aftermath, few things become clear. It is so that these white supremacist groups are emboldened by the current president and his racist nationalist rhetoric and policies. But also, and hear this carefully, this president is not a crude aberration in an otherwise glorious or even acceptable line of political decision makers, power brokers. Trumpism, if you will, is not unique to this particular person. It is instead the logical consequence of decades of corporate greed, privatization, and the outright attacks on the power of organized labor, all of which sell us this notion of individual choice and freedom. Meanwhile, wages stagnate, systemic racism gets worse, wars go on and on, and people are increasingly hopeless. And so in such conditions, people look for other people to blame. In such conditions, these death-dealing white supremacist ideologies flourish. What did the shooter say he was doing when he asked his mama to drive him across state lines, where then he ended people's lives? He said he was protecting property. But listen, there are no monsters, though there is monstrosity. Protecting property, protecting capital as a cover for degrading human life is not new under this president, is not fringe to a few online groups that produce a few lone wolf shooters. Laws that prevent people from camping when they don't have homes, panhandling ordinance, ordinances like the ones some have been fighting in downtown Greensboro under this majority Democrat city council, by the way, extra structures installed underneath bridges so nobody can sleep comfortably there, the expiration of the eviction moratorium during a pandemic and an economic downturn, all of these degrade life for the sake of property and property value. We seek lives full of meaning and purpose. And when we see plainly the places where these systems of displacement, injustice, mass incarceration, redlining, all of these forces of systemic oppression that we know to be evil, when we see plainly the ways they touch our own lives, whether from the side that suffers or the side that short-term benefits from the devil's bargain, our first call is to sit to learn, to be strengthened, to look these truths in the face. Perhaps then we are overcome with anger where we have been oppressed, with guilt where we have benefited from someone else's oppression. We marvel at our interconnectedness. We wonder what humanity is capable of. We come to the conclusion often that we do not know. But there is no simple solution there is no quick fix. There is no button to push to end the simulation. There is no election that will solve this problem. There is no waking up from the nightmare. There is no just vote or just wait or just turn the news off or just anything. There is no just injustice. There is simply this, the deep commitment to our only world the ways we seek and sometimes find 
that love that sets us all free. Love for the world, love for the people, love for the struggle, for freedom, for everyone, love that transcends kinship or personal relationships. Love that finds expression sometimes in our personal relationships, but the world changing kind whose source is other, the kind that draws the circle wide. This is universalism. The claim at the heart of universalist theology is not that all human beings are good and that evil in the world is a thing of the past or it can be chalked up to simple mistakes or a few bad actors. The central claim of universalist theology is this, despite the viciousness in us, all human beings are beloved, worthy of the love that passes understanding, that transcends space and time and even death. The love that flows freely from the beating heart of life that ennobles us to live more boldly, even in the face of death and catastrophe. It is this love, this big love, and the knowledge thereof from which we Unitarian Universalists act in the world. From which we plant our community gardens and give our last few bills to the one who asks. From which we get to know our neighbors and check in on them from time to time. From which we make choices about voting and other kinds of civic participation. From which we strike and riot and cheer on those who rise up for a better world in this lifetime. Chadwick Boseman, the actor who played Black Panther, died this week, the age of 43. I find myself repeating often in discussions, usually on Facebook, where I have critical things to say about leaders of all parties I find myself repeating that politics is not the place to look for heroes or saints. If you want saints, I recommend Catholicism. If you want heroes, you might look into the Marvel movies. And Chadwick Boseman tapped into something glorious, something bigger than himself, another world, another history in the movie Black Panther, and he did it with courage and with integrity. So if you haven't seen this movie, I won't spoil it, but here's the gist. Wakanda is an uncolonized, super technologically advanced nation in Africa, and the Black Panther is its king named T'Challa, played by Chadwick Boseman. So apparently in the making of the movie, the directors wanted him to have a British accent, which would imply that he was highly educated and a leader. Boseman said no, he would speak with a distinctly West African accent. The questions were, what if people don't like it? What if mainstream audiences can't handle it? We know what mainstream is code for in that sentence, but he stayed fast and insisted on that particular way into the life of the character. And what he said was, if we make that kind of compromise now, what else will we compromise? This is a small thing to be sure. It doesn't stop the violence. It didn't save his life. Still the floods rise and the fires rage, but it was a small act of defiance, of self-determination, of telling a story in a new way. Step by step, the longest march can be won. And it wasn't just the movie either. And as my colleague Candace Simpson writes, I know he was Chadwick and not Black Panther. I know he went to Howard and didn't hail from Wakanda. I know he was a human and not a superhero. And yet his face became synonymous with imagination, with power, with pride. Children, especially black children, have lost an actual hero. They don't know the difference between Black Panther and Chadwick, and neither do I right now. In this hour, on this land, we lost someone who helped us imagine, and that hurts. She continues, the power of the Black Panther movie wasn't the movie itself. I don't remember much about the plot. I do remember churches, buses, schools, youth groups of Black people getting dressed up to go see a Black movie about agency, love, power, imagination. 
I do remember conversations about imagining a world where Black people were never colonized. We had that for a season, and it was a worthwhile escape from this world. So like Candace reminds us, the legacy of Black Panther is not just about a movie and not just about an actor. It was about the beautiful exercise of collective imagination, the joy and the dressing up and the cheering on and the dreaming of and living for a time in a different world. If there are no monsters, and yet there is monstrosity in us, then there are no heroes, and yet there is heroism too. There are stories that free us and stories that trap us. We are not only the healers, but also we are the tellers. We are not also the hearers of these stories, but also we are the tellers. So in your telling of stories about yourself, about our city, about this county, about the election, about your fellow human beings, about your neighbors, about people you know and people you don't know. I offer you this blessing as we begin a new church year. So take this time to grab a little water and bring it near you. I'm gonna offer you the chance to touch your ears or your eyes, your mouth and your own hands in blessing. You can also take this time if you want to turn your videos on and change your view to gallery view so that we can see each other. As you look for stories to tell, may you perceive clearly. So we bless our ears and our eyes, whatever else it is that helps us to absorb the truth of the world around us. As you tell these stories, may you speak wisely. May your telling of these stories, may the words of your mouth be loving and clarifying, powerful and empowering. And as you let these stories in, as they affect you, as they move you to act in the world, may you touch gently and firmly with purpose and love. And may you bless all you touch. Amen. Will you rise in body or in spirit and turn off your videos to save bandwidth for a closing hymn, Blue Vote Home?
in saying thank you Pope Francis thank you one of the ways that we live out our mission to create loving community is to contribute financially to the ministries of this congregation and the good work of our community partners the Justice Action Team has decided to give our summer offering, which continues now to Greensboro Mutual Aid. This is an organization of neighbors helping neighbors. It started way back in the beginning of the pandemic when fired and laid off baristas shared their cash apps and their Venmos and ways you could toss, everybody could toss each other a couple bucks online. And the generosity was overflowing so the YWCA supports this community mutual aid effort as a fiscal sponsor. Our offering will now gratefully be received.
Will you join me in our chalice extinguishing words? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. as we leave this time together, set apart from the, west, the rest of our week. May you face monstrosity and heroism alike with courage and clarity, bound always by that great love that sets us all free. Amen. You can place your hands over your heart for our benediction hymn number 400. Shalom Havarim. This is a Hebrew song which means peace, dear friends, until we meet again. Shalom Havarim, Shalom Havarim, Shalom, Shalom, Lahitro, Lahitro, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom, shalom, la hitro, la hitro, shalom, shalom.